Aids Help just wrapped up their most important fundraiser of the year, that being the Royal Campaign for King and Queen of Fantasy Fest. Now, every penny raised during the two-month campaign fills a growing need at Aids Help. The amount of money raised this year was just incredible. Four candidates were able to raise $215,000. This morning we'll be talking with the executive director of AIDS Help, but first, here's a royal look back at this year's campaign. We can work together for a AIDS-free generation, and that is really our mission here tonight. Scott, thank you so much for being here back on the show with me today. Now, I was just telling our viewers about the amount of money that was raised during the King and Queen campaign. How thrilled were you, Scott? We are ecstatic. It is just overwhelming. Um, and it really goes to show how hard the candidates, you know, really put a lot of time and effort into their campaigns, and it's just phenomenal. We're, we're just so pleased and, and just impressed with the community, and um, it's awesome. It's it, awesome. It really is so awesome. And now, Scott, along with all of that, AIDS Help was so busy with the King and Queen events, but you guys have also really been working over the past 12 months with other organizations here in the community, you're really collaborating with them to help make up for some money that has been cut from the organization. That's true. I mean, I'm really focused on collaboration without duplication of services, and I think it's very important for nonprofits to work together in ways that we have really never worked together before, you know, without really duplicating services. One good example of that is Wesley House. Wesley House uh, is, uh, has been around a long time, and we started talking about how we could cut some of our administrative costs by our IT department, IT and marketing being shared by both organizations. So what has led to, from that is that the, we have one IT marketing department, and both Wesley House and AIDS help share in the cost of that. So it really has increases the efficiency of both organizations in that department as well as will over time decrease the cost for that department. So that's one great example. Another one is the health department. Uh, the health department, we've always been partners with the health department because they've always offered the clinical component to HIV AIDS to our clients. But in our collaboration, we're going to start doing case management within the clinic so that as a client, when the client goes in to have his or her labs or done or visit with the doctor, our case managers will be in the same building under the same roof, which is phenomenal for us, which mm -hmm. before they would, the client would have to run around to different appointments, different buildings, that sort of thing. And that can be very time consuming as mm -hmm. well as a lot of clients don't have transportation. Uh, and so transportation is an issue. So it'll be, it will provide more wraparound direct services all under one roof. So we're very thrilled with that prospect and, and we're, we're already doing it. We're already moving toward that. Um, so and, and it gives AIDS help a more clinical component that mm -hmm. we don't currently have. So we're very pleased with that partnership. Um, the last one that we've been working on for the past, oh, about six months now, is Florida International University. Uh, they have a the Stemple College of Public Health, which is on the campus there. It's part of FIU. And it's where their students are majoring in 
uh, social work, uh, masters in public health, uh, doctorates in public health, those types of programs, anything that's really doing with it, dealing with social services. Um, and the health department and AIDS Health have all come together to form, a, form the Robert Walker Scholarship Program. Robert Walker was um, well known in the community. He was our past executive director who passed away back in February. He was also the superintendent of, the, of Monroe County, so he was very big into education. So we thought this was more than fitting to have an institution like FIU to name the scholarship after him. Um, what this will do is the collaboration between the health department, AIDS Help, and FIU is to bring an intern here. For the next three years, we'll have an intern who's actually looking at what the face of HIV AIDS really looks like for specifically to Monroe County. Monroe County is different than the rest of the state as well as the rest of the country as well as how the disease is trending. It's trending mostly on the mainland and larger cities, metropolitan areas, it's trending more toward uh, African American and youth, mm -hmm. where Monroe County is older, white, um, male, uh, as far as the HIV AIDS is concerned. Um, so by bringing an intern here, we have a lot of, both agencies have years and years and years of data, but it's spread about in all different ways and formats. So this will be a way to qualify and quantify the data and really show what HIV AIDS, what the face of HIV AIDS looks like for Monroe County. That can be published, mm -hmm. then we can use that publication in order to, to apply for grants and funding. So we're Great. very, very excited about it. Well, wonderful. Well, you guys always impress me with everything that you have going on. Scott, thank you so much for joining me this morning. We'll thank be talking you. much more about AIDS Help in the future. They have some great events coming up. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and back at 8.30 a.m. Take care, everyone. If I